What's up world, my name is Sarth and these are going to be some actual guides to all the boss encounters in Blackwing Lair. Basically every guide out there is covering mechanics from private servers, so let's get right into it with actual boss guides for Classic. Razor Gore the Untamed There's a couple main strategies to dealing with the ad phase. The ads don't have as much health as they did on private servers, so you can either set your group up in four different sections and kill the ads right as they spawn, you can have your group be set up up the ramps so that the mobs run right to you, or you can have your main group set up in the middle and have your tanks and off tanks bring the ads to you and kill them there. One person can control the orb for the entire time, but if they do get hit they can be locked out for 50 seconds, so it's good to have a backup ranged DPS attacking the ads and being ready to pick up Razagor if needed. It's easiest to go after whatever eggs are closest to you, and destroy egg is set to pet action 4, so make sure you change this keybind to whatever is easy for you. Ads can be CC'd, but they're easy to kill so we're going to ignore that. When there's one egg left, have the main tank run over towards the orb, and the person controlling Razorgore can run him away. Let him release the boss, then the main tank takes control and can destroy the last egg himself. After destroying the last egg, he will get initial aggro from the boss, so that's why you have your main tank do the last one. It's worth mentioning that the tanks can control the orb from this position, so they don't have to run all the way up the ramp. Ideally, everyone hides line of sight, but it doesn't actually matter because the AoE fireball is kickable. The thing you do want to do is get away from your tank. Your main tank's gonna get conflagged. This might happen right off the back, so your off tank better be ready to pick up the boss instantly. This is a two tank fight solely because of the conflag mechanic. Make sure that your tanks aren't stacked, but also not in the melee group. Kick the fireball volley and collect your loot. Bailstraz the Corrupt This fight can range from 1 to 3 tanks depending on how fast you kill the boss. In private servers and vanilla, there was a lockout timer between the first time you pulled the boss to him despawning, so if you didn't kill him in time, you actually couldn't get any further in Blackwing Lair. That's not a thing in Classic. Make sure your main tank is the person that talks to Bailstraz to start the RP, because he'll instantly get aggro after that. If you target the boss before he turns hostile, it'll actually mess up your threat meters. Have your melee group on either side of the boss. He's a dragon, so you'll know he'll do a frontal and a tail swipe. Have your range group stacked together. Veilstrad's frontal cleave has a chain mechanic that kind of works like chain heal. If one person is too close to it, it could chain through the entire raid and wipe everybody. So make sure that nobody is standing near your main tank. Everyone in the raid is going to get Essence of Red. This basically gives you infinite resources. So healers, you're going to want to spam max rank spells because you'll never run out of mana. DPS can just go crazy, but the boss is also not tauntable. So this means this fight is more of a threat check than a DPS check. If you're having issues, just take it slow. At the start of the fight, rogues should pop a lip, do as much damage as possible, and instantly vanish. They should be fine on threat after that. Warriors, on the other hand, can use a lip when they're in their execute phase, especially if they're using recklessness. Once again, the big thing about this fight is not pulling aggro. The main mechanic is called Burning Adrenaline. Veil casts this every 15 seconds. Burning Adrenaline turns you into the bomb. You will blow up your raid. All you have to do is run either towards the front or the back of the room, whatever your raid has designated. One thing that's important about this is you will get instant cast and you'll do 300% damage. So while you're running away from the raid, make sure that you're still casting, although obviously you do want to watch your aggro. It's important to note that the first two casts of Burning Adrenaline will be on a mana user. Every third cast of Burning Adrenaline will be on the main tank. This main tank will die, and if you don't kill the boss in time, that means you're going to have to swap to your off tank. Since the boss is not tauntable, make sure that your off tank and possibly third tank are second and third on aggro. One way to make sure that this is possible is for every single warrior in your raid to replace Heroic Strike with Cleave. It slightly gimps your DPS, but it massively gimps your threat. Your tanks, on the other hand, want to be using the fastest weapon speed main hand that they can possibly find. And their main threat generator is Heroic Strike. So they are spamming Heroic Strike on cooldown and hopefully they have something like an Alcor's Razor. You can kill the boss before he puts Burning Adrenaline on your tank, so you don't even have to lose his world buffs. But in all honesty, this fight is really easy if you just take it slow. Keep the tanks alive, don't pull aggro, and if you get Burning Adrenaline, get out of the raid. There is some raid-wide fire damage, but it's not that bad. Broodlord Lashlayer is not tauntable, and he is by far the hardest hitting boss in Blackwing Lair. This fight is a 2-3 tank fight, your main tank and off tanks are going to be wanting to wear a shield and using greater stone shield potions at all times. 
The goal is for the tanks to maintain primary, secondary, and tertiary threat. Positioning is important for this fight. Melee want to make sure that they're not right in front of the boss because the boss will do a cleave, but they also want to make sure that their back is against the wall so that they aren't getting knocked back from the blast wave. Ranged, on the other hand, can be positioned all the way against the wall, making sure that their left side is literally touching the wall and they won't get affected by any of the suppression devices or pull any of the whelps. For the tanks, it's important to note that this boss does a knockback. When he does this, it'll drop the main tank's threat in half. That's why you want your off tanks to have the next highest on threat, so that he doesn't turn around and cleave one shot most of the melee. This boss also casts Mortal Strike. Instantly after you cast Mortal Strike, you want to make sure that you get a Power Word Shield up. The tank's also going to want to pop a defensive CD when this happens. Since the boss hits so hard, make sure your Warlocks are not casting Curse of Recklessness, and make sure to keep up Demoralizing Shout. As long as the tanks stay alive and hold aggro, you're going to be fine. Fire Maw and the other dragons used to be known as the Loot Dragons. But so far in the classic client, it seems to be one of the hardest encounters for most guilds. First things first, every single dragon from here on out, you'll be wanting for all of your melee, and especially your tanks, to wear the Onyxia Scale Cloak. It's not absolutely necessary for melee, but taking the DPS loss and possibly surviving a rogue Shadow Flame is a lot more important than keeping whatever cloak you have on already. For every drake that casts Shadow Flame, there should be a priest designated to pre-popping a Power Word Shield on your main tank. The cast takes 2 seconds, and if you have a cast bar or you're just watching the animation, you can see him casting it. If you do this, you can mitigate half the damage. This is a 2-3 tank fight, and it's important that you have your positioning set up correctly. The main tanks want to be separated, tanking in these two areas. The reason for this is that the boss does a frontal cone called Wing Buffet. When he casts Wing Buffet, he's going to drop the aggro of whoever's in front of him. If you haven't guessed by now, Threat is one of the most important mechanics in Blackwing Lair. Your off tanks are going to be positioned outside of the room, LOSing the boss, until he casts Shadow Flame. That's when your main off tank is going to run inside, taunt the boss, and get into his main position. While the off tank has aggro, the main tank can pull Rage because he doesn't want to rip aggro back. The boss is then going to cast his Wing Buffet. Instantly after that, the main tank should just get aggro, but if not, he can taunt Mocking Blow or AoE Taunt, whatever he needs. Healers want to position outside of the corridor so that they can see the main tank and heal him while still being out of LOS of the boss. If they do this right, they'll never have to move and they'll never get any stacks, which I'll talk about in a second. Ranged DPS are stacking very close to the healers, and your melee DPS are obviously on top of the boss, and they'll be actually running out on the inside of the room. Designate a couple healers to be hanging out with the melee on this side of the room. The boss does an AoE stack called Flame Buffet. Flame Buffet increases in damage for each stack that it grows. So depending on your heals, you want to be LOSing the boss between 5 and 10 stacks. This means get as much DPS done as possible before you have to move and LOS the boss. It'll take 20 seconds to drop your stacks and for you to be able to attack again. Every other phase of you attacking, you can take more stacks because you'll be able to bandage yourself while you're hiding. If your main tank is in full fire resist gear, he can main tank the boss the entire time. He'll just keep resisting stacks and take basically no damage from the fire. But if not, the reason you have a third tank is to run in there, taunt and hold the boss for long enough for your main tank to drop his stacks. It has been simmed and shown that if your DPS stacks fire resist, they can stay in attacking the boss the entire encounter, and they'll actually do more damage overall because they'll have an increased uptime fighting the boss. That's it, loot dragon number one is down. Ebon Rock is a 2-3 tank fight. You want your tanks positioned in these three spots. The reason for this, as usual, are AoE frontals. All of your tanks and all of your melee should be wearing Onyxia Scale Cloaks. Like the rest of the drakes, Ebon Rock casts a Wing Buffet. As usual, this is a frontal cone that'll drop aggro. He also casts Shadow Flame, but the main mechanic to watch out for is called Shadow of Ebon Rock. When he casts this on a tank, you want to make sure that your off tanks are taunting instantly because if he stays on that target, he will heal. He will heal a ridiculous amount and you will be fighting this boss at the same percentage of health for way too long. So if you're running three tanks, you'll have a main tank, a tank that'll taunt for wing buffets, and a tank that'll taunt for the Shadow of Ebon Rock. This boss doesn't hit too hard and the only thing really to watch out for if you're a melee DPS is that you stay behind the boss. Since there's two to three tanks taunting the boss on rotation, 
you're going to be kind of dancing around, making sure that you're behind the boss, and especially not in the position to get shadow flamed right as one of the tanks taunts. If the tanks hold aggro and swap right, this boss is one of the easiest encounters in the game. Moving on to the next drake, Flame Gore. Once again, put on your Onyxia skill cloak if you're a tank, and probably if you're a melee. You can tank him wherever you want, but we actually tank him in the same position as Ebonrock. Once again, this is a 2-3 tank fight. There's a Wing Buffet, a Shadow Flame, and a Frenzy this time. The tanks can be in the same positions that they were for the last drake. The main mechanic on this fight is the Frenzy, so you want to have 2-3 hunters in your group alternating trank shots. When the boss enrages, just have a hunter trank shot and that's basically it. The main issue that can arise is if both hunters trank at the same time, then that ability won't be off cooldown for the next enrage. So you do want to make sure that you're designating this ability. It's also a spell it can miss so they may need to call it out in comms. Chromagus is probably the most mechanic heavy fight in the entire raid, but saying that doesn't mean much, it's still a very simple fight. The reason for this is because he has 5 different breaths. He'll only use 2 of these breaths per week, and if you wipe it'll be the exact same ones when you find him again. Chromagus's breaths are AoEs so you can LOS them. Everyone but your main tank is going to LOS every breath except for the bronze breath. This is basically the only one you really need to watch out for. This one stuns for 6 seconds, reduces health by 50%, and halves everyone's aggro that's hit. Your raid will want to designate the off tank, one to two hunters, and the healers to be ready in case you do get time lapse. The reason for this is because you want everyone else to get hit by this ability except for these people. If done correctly, everyone's going to get stunned except for this group, and your off tank's just going to pick up the boss, reposition them, the healers will keep them alive, and the hunter is going to deal with the frenzy. Every other breath you're going to want to LOS. Your hunters need to be ready to trank shot the boss if he goes into a frenzy, but at 20% he'll just enrage for the rest of the fight. The boss is also going to be casting Brood Afflictions. All of these can be dispelled in one way or another, so this fight for healers is a lot about dispelling. The only affliction that most people need to worry about is the Bronze Affliction. This ability randomly will stun you for 4 seconds. The only way to remove this ability is by using an Hourglass Sand, which drops throughout the raid. If your raid doesn't have enough sands, it is most important that your tank and off tank have these, your tank healers, and of course the hunters that are dealing with the frenzy. Usually you can buy them off the auction house, they're kind of expensive right now, but over time you'll just get enough of them. If you can't dispel this, make sure to LOS the breaths 4 seconds early. The reason for this is you could be running out to LOS the breaths, get stunned randomly, and then just get one shot. Outside of that, you should LOS every other breath because he alternates between whatever two breaths he's using that lockout. Really quickly, to pull this boss, you're going to have to click this lever over here. The person who's clicking the lever can actually be summoned, so pre-summon them, and right as they click it, they can take the summon and they'll be back with the range before the boss comes and kills them. You know how as you target any mob, they have a red circle around them? Well, for Chromagus, you want to use that circle to be directly behind where the tiles change color. That'll be the perfect position for the tank. Your melee want to LOS the breaths in this position. The ranged DPS want to LOS the breaths in this position. Your healers could really stay LOS from the boss at all times. Just make sure that your melee have heals as well. The last thing to note for Chromagus is that he gets spell vulnerability. What this means is he'll be weak to one school of magic at a time. This changes periodically, but if you have one mage just cast detect magic on the boss and you have a weak aura that I linked in my previous video, you can tell what spell school he's weak to. When it's your particular school, just go ham, but if it's right at the beginning of the fight, just watch aggro. Let's be real, we're all looking at you warlocks. That pretty much covers everything for this encounter. Congrats on getting to the last boss in this raid, Nefarian. You're gonna one shot it. This is technically a 3 phase fight, with the first phase being an ad phase. The adds come out of these two corridors, so you want to split your raid in half. The adds don't do that much damage and don't have that much health, so you can kind of just burn them. If your group is strong, you'll destroy all of the adds before they even move out of the corridor. For this fight, make sure that every single person in the raid equips their Onyxia Scale Cloak. I'll say this one more time, every single person equip the Ani Scale Cloak. During Phase 1, Nefarian will lock on to one random person in the raid and just attack him, 
It doesn't do that much damage, you can basically ignore it, just heal through it. Once you kill 42 of the Draconids, Phase 2 starts and Nefarian flies down. While he's flying down, Neff will do a special version of Shadow Flame that'll kill everyone who's not wearing their cloak. This is also the optimal time to get into position, and you'll actually drop combat so you can drink and eat up to full before fighting the boss. Have your tank get into position, and everyone else can LOS behind this pillar, just so that no matter what, they don't pull initial aggro. Like most dragons, Nefarian does a frontal cleave, he also does a tail swipe, he does a frontal shadow flame ability, and he has a bellowing roar, basically an AoE fear. If you're ranged, you can LOS the fear, or even better, just range it. Your abilities have a longer range than the actual fear itself. Of course, make sure your main tank has either a Tremor Totem or a Fear Ward. They can stand stance and block the fear themselves, but this is just suggested. Nefarian also casts a curse called Veil of Shadow that reduces healing effects on the target by 75%. Mages and Druids just be ready to decurse this instantly. I would leave this up more to the Druids because the Mages will be more focused on DPS and they may be in a position that's too far to get the decurse off. But you really need to make sure that you get this decursed instantly if it's on your main tank. The main mechanic for Nefarian are the class calls. He'll do a call for each specific class that does something different. I'm not going to go over all of them, the ones that are very important to note are for hunters, he breaks your ranged weapon. So you have to unequip and re-equip your bow or else you might not be able to do any attacks. For warriors, he'll force you into a special version of Berserker Stance. When this happens, your main tank is going to take a lot more damage, so make sure that you keep him alive. Mages will randomly cast Polymorph, sheeping someone. An easy way to deal with this is for your mages to be positioned here, and when mage class call happens, they can blink an LOS back behind this pillar, just hang out. When it's priest's turn, make sure that they're not using any direct healing spells. All you're going to want to do is use Power Word Shield and Renew during this phase, or else you're going to put a debuff on the target that makes them take extra damage for the next 30 seconds. Rogues are teleported somewhere close to Nefarian, so if they're teleported in front of him, all your main tank needs to do is turn the boss. You cannot vanish out of the class call. When it's shamans, just destroy the totems, warlocks just AoE the adds, and that's basically it. When Neff hits 20%, he's going to resurrect all of the dead dragonkins from phase 1. All you need to do, have your off tank, AoE taunt, and then you can blow them up. They have so little health. So the mages AoEing, and some people using Stratholm Holy Water and Sappers will kill them instantly. That's it, get back on the boss and collect your loot. Congratulations on clearing Blackwing Lair.